Fox News host Tucker Carlson grilled 2024 GOP hopefuls over the weekend. Here's an exchange he had with candidate Asa Hutchinson about COVID-19 vaccines. Let's watch. One of the powers that government did usurp uh, over the past several years is, is the right to decide what medicine you take in the form of, of COVID mandates. Um, how did you feel about that? And how many COVID shots did you take? And how do you feel about it now in retrospect? How many COVID shots did you take? Zero. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I think Tucker confirming for the first time, I think, that he never got, uh, he didn't, hadn't said one way or the other previously. Uh, maybe he did, and I just missed if he had. Um, I, I found it interesting that Asa Hutchinson didn't, it seemed like he didn't want to answer that question. Maybe he perceives that among the Republican primary voters, like you're not even supposed to say that you did get vaccinated. Um, would have liked to see his longer answer there. Um, Do we believe him? Wasn't it a Fox News policy for employees to be vaccinated? They had a mandatory testing policy. I don't know if they had a mandatory vaccination policy. I don't think they had a mandatory vaccination policy. I think they had a, they might have had a, I mean, I, I was on Fox during the period of the pandemic and I mean, I am vaccinated and I can't recall if they asked me to confirm it. So this is you from You did a... have to, when you went to New York studios, you had to take a test. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was consistent with New York law. This is from a July 2021 uh, CNN Business article titled, Fox has quietly implemented its own version of a vaccine pa passport while its top personalities attack them. It goes on to say Fox employees, including those who work at Fox News, received an email obtained by CNN Business from the company's human resources department in early June that said Fox had developed a secure voluntary way for employees to self-attest their vaccination status. The system allows for employees to self-report to Fox the dates their shots were administered and which vaccines were used. The company has encouraged employees to report their status, telling them that providing this information to Fox will assist the company with space planning and contact tracing. Um, so that's not a, so it was voluntary. a, a, a mandate, but it, it does seem to be obviously encouraged at the company. Look, I think that it is, it, it, it is hypocritical for people who are upset about shaming people about not getting vaccinated to shame people, especially an older man like Asa Hutchinson from getting a vaccine that very much could have saved his life and prevented him from being hospitalized. Yeah. I think that's frankly cruel and craven. I don't. To, 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 do, to jockey, especially as a younger man, to an older man who has a, we know he has a pre-existing built-in condition because we can look at him and we know what his age is. So to sit there in, in a political context, try to shame people for their healthcare decisions when you made your bread and butter during the um, pandemic by calling out people who are doing the exact same thing to people who are vaccine injured or who are vaccine hesitant or for some other reason wanted to choose differently, do you believe in freedom of choice or do you not? Do you just believe in imposing your choices on everybody else? Th th I mean, this is a very well, dangerous Well, Hutchinson could have responded place. by saying it's none of your business. Yeah, it's and true. And, and I would off. criticize him as well for bowing yeah. to that kind of pressure. Now, we live in a world where, I don't know if you saw these stories as well, um, that In-N-Out is banning employees from wearing masks. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Um, you're now in a position, and at the same time that they uh, have been shielded from liability for the consequences of any employees contracting COVID as a consequence of their policies. So which way do you want it? I, I completely support all of the pushback and the back pay that people who, got, who uh, were fired because of not wanting to comply with COVID policies that ended up not making any sense anyway, got. Those uh, New York, what were they, uh, fire, firefighters or what have you, mm -hmm. that were able to get back pay, I supported that. I, I have always said that I felt like the man, a, a mandate should be the last option and that you need to offer a lot more carrots to people to encourage them to, to take steps that you think are in the best public health interest. And I, you know, and I think that the, from a civil libertarian perspective, that's how it should be. But, but I, if you're in a legal framework where you're, there's no accountability. I can't imagine a for an employee's, liability All of these companies got liability with, no, no, no. shields. I can't imagine a workable liability structure where you can have 
Party A liable for giving Party B COVID because you can't. You, don't you know can who if gets your it. employer makes it illegal for you to wear a mask. Like if you not, choose, not illegal against policy. The, okay, the, you the ban, can't make it illegal. You, put, you, you don't do have this to a ban. It's a ban. We we hate bans, right? We've been talking about how much we hate bans this whole yeah. time. Now an employer, it's it's like fine. Don't make people mask. Don't make people get vaccinated. But here I am trying That's to protect my own health. What if I'm immunocompromised? What if I'm elderly? What if I'm taking care of somebody elderly at home and don't want to bring home a disease to my family? What if I don't have health insurance and can't risk a, a, a prolonged hospital stay? What if it would bankrupt me? And so you're telling me that I can't exercise my personal choices because my employer tells me I, I have to expose myself to the elements? Like, so this, this is what I'm saying. Like, I think that there's something, like, I have no, I don't care about Asa Hutchinson. I, I have no interest in his campaign or any of the people, frankly, that were in, uh, interviewed at this particular event. But I think this is a really dangerous territory we're getting into, where even though majorities of people, including, I'm sure, majorities of Republicans have gotten vaccinated, now Republican presidential candidates are so cowed that they can't, they feel like they can't even acknowledge without getting booed their vaccination well, I think status. we did get the rest of that clip. Let's actually play it. But, but I think it's fair, and I, and I can see that you recoiled when I asked you that question. Um, and I don't think, honestly, you should be asking people about their medical care. But that became a, a matter of public policy. And I do think that the whole country ought to pause and assess, like, what did we just go through? What, How do we feel about we, it now? And so it's a very strange... I don't think people should be asking folks about their medical status. And yet here we are. <laughs> Gun to my head. I was forced to ask you about your medical status. Yeah. Come on. Um, I, right. We should go back to norm where it's none of your business. And people should decide based on their own health profile and what their doctor tells them, whether they need to get vaccinated or do whatever policies. Again, this was a decision that was yanked away from 80 million people when Joe Biden unilaterally declared that you would have to get vaccinated or lose your job, uh, something that was then overruled by the Supreme Court. So it is, I agree with Tucker that it's a very important policy. I don't think, you know, pick, I, 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 if I was an elderly person, I, I would have recommended, you know, getting vaccinated for other, I, I am vaccinated. I obviously I don't have a, I don't think it's unwise to get vaccinated. I'm not um, wildly persuaded by arguments that I know that people have made that many of our viewers are probably sympathetic to, and I appreciate dissident perspectives on COVID, but I'm, I'm not uh, frankly persuaded by the dangers, the harm side of it. I, I think there's more legitimacy on the it did not, you know, do what was what was said about it early enough. It didn't ha doesn't go far enough toward prevention. Um, I have skepticism how much. Even severe illness, it's protecting. If you've already had COVID, it seems to be about as good as a, a, a as a case anyway. So yeah. I have a lot of concerns on that front. I'm, but I'm not I'm not over the moon persuaded by the its harms or there'd be so many blood clots or so many things like that. Especially for I am someone who's susceptible to respiratory viruses, so I'd rather whatever small tiny chance there is, I felt more comfortable dealing Asa with that. Asa Hutchinson is 72 less. years old. Yeah, and for him, I think and, it's a pretty clear case. And it's worth noting that he signed bills into law that pro prohibited, as governor of Arkansas, that prohibited businesses and government facilities from requiring proof, proof of COVID-19 vaccination for staff. He is not some pro-vaccine right. zealot. That's and great, even and I'm he, glad he did that. And even he is being cowed into submission by admitting that he is a 72-year-old man decided it was in his best health interest privately and probably in consultation with his own doctor to take COVID, uh, to take a COVID vaccine. Well, tomorrow on Rising, we will bring you the same show as always, but with tomorrow's news. Uh, we can't, you know, travel through time, so we don't know what that's going to be, but I'm sure it'll be great. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who prefer to listen while you're on the move, we're now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. See you later. Take care.